Hey everyone, this is a review of the Genmitsu 3020 Pro Max V2 CNC router. We're gonna cover setup, we're gonna cover software that you need, accuracy this thing has, and materials you can cut. So full disclosure, Sane Smart contacted me and asked if they could send this router to me to review. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the video description to Sane Smart's website. They have a lot of great resources if you're getting started with CNC routers. As far as physical dimensions of this thing, the work area on the standard version is 300 millimeters by 200 millimeters by 78 millimeters high. I have on this one the extended bed version, which doubles that work area, so now I've got 400 by 300 uh, with the same height. The spindle on this that comes with it is a 300 watt spindle. It turns from 3000 to 12,000 RPM, uh, and it's an eighth inch diameter bit that it takes with an eighth inch shank for the collets. You can upgrade this with a separate upgrade kit to a quarter inch router motor. Uh, so that's, if you want to do that and get a little bit more power out of it, you can. So each axis on this machine has an individual stepper motor that runs it. It's got a lead screw for each axis as well with a anti-backlash nut so you're not going to be wobbling back and forth when you change directions. It's got circular linear rails, two each on the Z axis and the Y axis. And the X axis has a separate profile linear rail here on the top and bottom that it runs back and forth on. It is very sturdy. There's no perceptible wobble. This is a very solid machine. Another nice feature is they've got a manual adjustment knob for all of these in case you don't want to mess with the offline controller. Now one really nice feature this has is an automatic Z probe. You just enter the height of this in software and then set it on top of your workpiece, connect it to the controller, and then this completes a circuit whenever these touch, so you know the exact height that you are above your work surface. So you go ahead and hit, get on probe and hit enter, and this will drop down, and the moment there is electrical connection, you'll see it light up, and now it's set that zero height to be exactly on the height of your work surface. Really nice feature. Now the standard bed on this, it comes with an aluminum spoil board, the extension kit, you can buy another aluminum spoil board for it, and I've got some MDF spoil boards they make if you want to do wood carving, so you're not cutting into the aluminum uh, when you're cutting shapes out and cutting all the way through. So all of those are upgrades and accessories, uh, except for the standard aluminum spoil board that comes with it. Now one really nice thing is this comes with an offline controller, so you can do every single function you need to. You can put an SD, a micro SD card in this, and you can run a job completely off of this. You can zero, uh, you can use the Z probe, you can do everything and then start the job. You can jog it back and forth. Everything you need to do, you can do with this. So if you don't have a laptop or a computer you want in a dusty workshop environment, you don't have to do that. I run mine mostly off of this old laptop that I don't mind if it gets some dust in it. Uh, so I just hook it up with a USB cable and you can run it with a G-code sender software as well. So you've got both options with this model. One safety feature that is absolutely necessary on a CNC router is an e-stop button. So it's a physical button that you can hit. It will stop everything. You don't have to mess around with software trying to find on the screen where to click. Just hit this button. It's in the same spot every time. It will stop your spindle. It will stop all axes motion and freeze the machine. When you're done, you've got everything back in a safe configuration. You pull this out and twist it. And it turns back off. You don't see the, the message anymore and you can start working again. All right, setup on this is really straightforward. Uh, if you get just the generic kit uh, without the extension bed, you pretty much just have to bolt on this part and attach the router motor and you're good to go after attaching the various cables in their labeled spots. It comes with a user manual that's pretty detailed on the assembly and I think they did a great job with documentation. For the Y-axis extension kit, it's a little bit more involved. You're gonna have to change out your Y-axis guide rods and the lead screw. Uh, you're gonna have to add these rails in, the adapter plate for the spoil boards and an extra spoil board. So it's a little bit more involved, but it's very doable. Uh, and it comes with a very detailed installation guide for those as well. It included our wrenches for your spindle to change out your bits. And they have a nice little organizer that comes with this whole thing. It's got hold down clamps, zip ties, the needed Allen wrenches, uh, extra limit switches, and extra hardware uh, for your setup so you've got support and replacement pieces if anything 
needs to be maintained over the long run of having your routers. Now, one thing, if you're doing aluminum cutting, you definitely need to use those hold down clamps I showed. If you're doing just wood cutting with a sheet of plywood or something, and you have a lot of surface area, I highly recommend using blue painter's tape. The way to do that, put blue painter's tape on your spoil board, put blue painter's tape on your workpiece, and then put super glue on one of them, and activator on the other, put them together for uh, 30 seconds to a minute, and you're good to go. That's not coming off. It's a very sturdy way to put it on there, and then just give it a couple taps to break loose the super glue when you're done, and you're good to go. You didn't have to clamp anything down. You didn't have to take up space in your work area with fixturing. It's just, you've got your entire work area to cut on with sheet goods if you do it that way. Dust collection on this thing is absolutely fantastic. The, this is an extra accessory with this little dust boot, but it allows you, it's got magnetic uh, a hookup here, and you can get to the router motor and change out bits uh, without having to take this whole thing off. It just attaches here with a set screw on either side right to the motor. Uh, and then if you need to change out with a deeper bit, you've got two different options for the bristles. Uh, and you can just pop it back on and then pop whichever one of these you want around that and you're good to go. I did a lot of cutting with this. It worked really well and I stopped. I took it off halfway through and, and did some more cutting and it was very obvious immediately when I stopped vacuuming, when I took the hose off of this, dust started building up immediately. So this is very effective. It gets almost all the dust this thing creates. I'm really happy with its performance for dust collection. One thing I will note, your hose comes straight up and you do have this fan right here that spins. So you need to figure out a way to route your hose away from this router motor uh, fan just so it doesn't rub. That's really the only design thing that I didn't like about it. You could make a 90 degree adapter probably or buy one uh, or just have like a hose clamp that holds your hose up and away from it. Either of those solutions should work. Now let's talk accuracy for this thing. Um, I did a metal cut test uh, with some shapes. I've just got some inside diameters, outside diameters, and a square on here. This is 6061 aluminum. Uh, and I just did it with a standard straight 1 8 inch uh, two flute cutter. Uh, and this held plus or minus 15 thousandths of an inch uh, for all the dimensions on this. And I noticed they were all a little bit undersized. So I went back and realized I hadn't calibrated this thing. I was just using the factory calibration. Uh, so I went back and, and calibrated it. You, you can do that. There's instruction videos out there to do that. Um, you basically move the spindle and then measure exactly how far it went. And you do some math with how, you, how much it traveled versus how much you told it to travel. And then you can adjust the stepper motor to distance measurements. Uh, and doing that, I've, I got another six thousandths of an inch knocked off of my error. So this, this is holding plus or minus 10 thousandths of an inch, uh, which is very good, I think, for this size of machine um, and using an eighth inch uh, diameter cutter. So, you know, if you've got a, you know, a big mill that's using a half inch diameter cutter or something like that, you can hold five thousandths all day and it's not an issue. This one achieves ten thousandths pretty easily, which I think is really good um, for a hobby CNC. So the inside of this is one inch diameter. We are eight thousandths off. Inside of this circle is 1.75 by design, so we're only nine thousandths off here. And then outside of this square was 2.25 by design, right on for that one. Now one thing I will note, with the y-axis extension, the bed in the z direction is a little less stable. You can see some flexure when you really push down on it out at the edges. Uh, I haven't really noticed any issues with that. I took very shallow passes. These were five thousandths of an inch passes in depth that I was doing for each of these. So it, it didn't really have the opportunity to push the bed down that much. Um, but if you really need Z stability with this, I would cut in the very center of your bed. So not only is dimensional accuracy important, but squareness of your axes is also very important as well. So if you've got your X and Y axes, if they're not square, instead of cutting a circle or a square, you're gonna end up with an ellipse or a rhombus. So I checked this as best as I could. I ran 
from the, the origin all the way down one side, then back to the origin and all the way down the length of the other, and I could measure no perceptible difference uh, out of square uh, from several different squares that I have. So the Genmitsu router ships, the one I got at least, perfectly square, uh, and that's just a testament to their manufacturing processes. 2.793. Two point seven nine three. This is very square. All right, let's talk about what I have cut with this so far. I have done sixty sixty one aluminum. I've done cast aluminum, Baltic birch plywood. I've carved walnut. I've just plain routered walnut, and I've done some pine as well. So we'll get into all of these. I will say for metal, it is slow going. This took around two and a half hours. Uh, to cut away all this material you see here. I was going slow because I wanted the best uh, dimensional accuracy I could get out of it to test the router's capability. So if I went faster, I might have been able to get this done fairly quickly, but with a lot less precision. Walnut carving did very well with this. Uh, the way that works, you hog away a bunch of material with a square end bit, and then you do a finishing pass that goes back and forth with a ball nose bit. And you can see I carved both of these as like a water droplet and this is just kind of a contour surface. This was my first attempt. I didn't secure it well enough. It was flexing a little bit because my work piece was too small and my step over, which is how much it moves side to side on the finish pass, was a little bit small on this and you can see, or a little bit not overlapping enough. This was 12 or yeah, 12% 12 step over and you can see all the contours here left by the bit. This one, I moved to an 8% step over. I think it did a lot better. One thing I, I will say, I do have a couple spots that weren't cleaned up by the finish pass, and I set my bit a little bit lower, but that's that could be due to me not setting the bit the right height at the bit change, um, going from the roughing to the finishing pass, but this I think is small enough that it will sand out with a, just a, a light sanding. So. Very nice for carving. It is slower going if you want a nice finished surface. This took roughly half an hour to cut out on the roughing pass and then two and a half hours on the finished pass. This is a three inch by three inch square. So it is slow going if you want a nice finished surface when you're carving. If you just have right angle surfaces like this, it does a lot faster. I did this out of walnut again and just wanted to throw some sockets in there and see how well I could get this uh, matching up. I, I ran this all at once. I added a 32nd of an inch to the outer diameter of each of these and they all slide in really great. And you can see it holds uh, even up to 90 degrees, they're not gonna fall out. So it's a very snug fit for these, but none of them had problems fitting in. I did some aluminum engraving. This is just cast aluminum and it turned out very well. You can get very detailed engravings out of this. Happy with the way that turned out. And then I did some plywood cutting just to see if I could do some small shapes. This did really well. I just threw a star on there and it cut out in a minute or so. And the one thing you'll have to do if you're cutting shapes out completely is put tabs on these and then you cut them out with a multi-tool or a small saw afterwards and then sand those little tabs off so you get clean edges, but it worked out really well. I also did some melamine with this. My daughter wanted a microphone stand and I always love getting her in the shop to help me with projects she's interested in. And it cut out that melamine uh, three quarter inch deep by 11 inch circle and then a smaller three and a half inch circle in 18 minutes for both of those. And then it bored a pilot through the center for, a, for a, a, a dowel rod. So I was impressed with the speed that this thing can handle. You'll get even faster results if you upgrade to that quarter inch router motor. All right, so we've talked about the hardware this thing has and the features, the physical features of it. Now let's talk about the software you need to run it. Uh, there's three different types of software you need to use a CNC router and that's a CAD software, computer-aided design, that lets you design the parts you wanna make. Uh, and then there's CAM, computer-aided manufacturing, which generates tool paths. It tells the motors how far to turn, how far to move in the X, Y, and Z directions, and how fast to turn the spindle. That's G-code tool paths that the CAM software generates. Then you need a G-code sender, which takes that G-code file and tells the, the actual 
CNC router when to execute each of those commands so it kind of runs the whole thing. So three different types of software. Some of those software types will do dual functions, like they can design and generate G-code. Uh, so I'll go ahead and cover what I've been using and what I plan on using in the future. So I started with Easel, which is an online software. It lets you design parts, simple parts, uh, like circles and shapes and, and you know just generic lines. Um, and then you can use that to also generate G-code. It is free for their light version, which is 2D files, like just cutting stuff out of a sheet. And it's got a 30-day trial for their pro version, which lets you do 3D carvings like this one. I did this all with Easel uh, and then used Candle to run the router itself. Uh, so Easel is a great place to start with. It's very user-friendly. It even tells you suggested cut speeds based on your bits. Uh, so I highly recommend getting started with that. Candle is the G-code sender that comes with this router. I think it's perfectly fine. It works very well. It's intuitive. Other people use Universal G-code sender, UGS. Those seem to be the two primary ones that people use as a G-code sender. Uh, Candle works great for me. I just stick with it because that's what's in the, the manual. It's what SaneSmart supports. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Now, if I'm going to design a more complicated part, I'm definitely not doing it in Easel. I'm going to use a CAD program to do it. One that I really like that is free and online is Onshape. Uh, it's very user-friendly, I think, at least as an engineer. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy to get started with. And with that, you can generate either a, a DXF or a SVG and import it into a CAM software and just get your cut paths from that. One that I haven't tried that looks like it would be a really good option is Fusion 360, which is free for a limited number of parts if you're a hobbyist or maker. And they've got the ability to do 3D design as well as their own CAM capabilities in the software. So if you're looking for complicated parts, I've heard there's a little bit more of a learning curve for the Fusion 360 CNC router applications, um, but that might be where you wanna look at if you're doing complicated designs. So overall, I think this is a fantastic hobby CNC. I am getting great results out of it. It's really opened up what I can do. I can make jigs, templates with it. It cuts a lot faster than a hobby laser is gonna be able to cut uh, for thick materials and I'm really happy with how this thing's performing.